Hola, soy yo Vicky otra vez. Okay, so espero que todo bien. I hope you're all well, safe, uh, and wearing your masks and looking to the future for a vaccine for the new year. Okay, against COVID, because of course you may be watching this video and by now COVID might be a thing of the distant past, so let's hope so. Okay, so what we're going to look at today is this little verb, soler, um, which is really quite handy little verb to use uh, if you don't remember the imperfect tense, especially, or even, uh, because if you learn how to conjugate this verb, then you only need to use an infinitive after it. Um, so instead of having to learn all different ten uh, all different verbs and endings, this verb will serve just on its own for quite a lot of things. So soler more or less translates to something that you normally do. Um, and uh, yeah, something you're, is your custom to do, something you normally do every day or used to do when we go into the past tense. So we're going to look at the present tense first of all. So normally when we're talking about uh, what we do, like we would use a word like normally, uh, but in Spanish, normalmente voy a la playa, or uh, a menudo, often voy a la playa, or uh, muchas veces voy a la playa. So we would conjugate, you know, the void, the, the, what we normally do, whatever verb it, in particular it is, in this case it's the verb ir. Um, and uh, if, if we were to talk about something else that we normally did, we would have to conjugate that verb as well. The good thing about soler is if we use it in the present tense, now it is a diphthong, so the O changes to UE. So we've got suelo, suele, suele, solimos, Soleis, swellen, and that is uh, the different persons for what you normally do, plus the infinitive of whatever it is. So, we're going to look at some examples which hopefully will make it clearer. Well, notice that the first person, suelo, that also means floor. So, we've got to be careful with that, but I mean, normally it's obvious from the context of what you're saying whether you mean I normally or floor. <laughs> so, you might say, I normally clean the floor, so that would be suelo limpia el suelo. So that'd be interesting, but anyway. Okay, so here we've got some examples. Number one, suelo ir a la playa los domingos. Yeah, so that would translate to I normally go to the beach on Sundays. So of course we could say it the other way and say normalmente voy a la playa los domingos. But as I say, the beauty of this verb is this is the only verb you really need to, if you're going to use this, uh, so it doesn't matter what other verb you're using, that will always be in the infinitive. So you're only really having to learn the conjugation of one verb to talk about regular habits in the present. Sueles comer en un restaurante? You know, do you normally have lunch in a restaurant? Well, it can be eat, but remember in Spain, comer is not only to eat, but it's also to have lunch. Número tres. Él suele hablar solo en inglés. That needs a little... Uh, the O's not very well written there. Let's change that. So... No, uh, sorry, él suele hablar solo en inglés. He normally speaks only in English. Uh, número cuatro, solemos beber vino rosado. Again, the O, uh, having problems with O's in this uh, little exercise for some reason. I didn't like my O's. Uh, so, solemos beber vino rosado. We normally drink uh, rosé wine, which is certainly true in my house. Uh, solemos beber vino rosado. And numero cinco, suelen estudiar mucho. So they normally study hard or a lot. Uh, notice in numero tres, um, I have added the L there, because of course suele could be he or she. So I put él suele hablar solo en inglés to make it clear that I was trying to say he 
normally uh, speaks only in English. With the others, it's clear which person we're talking about, so I haven't bothered putting in the yo or do or ellos or nosotros. Okay, because when the ending and the verb is uh, unique, you don't need to use the person. Okay, vale, muy bien. So that's the present tense. So in the present tense, it's something we normally do. If we go into the past tense, we're talking about something we used to do, uh, which of course we can also make using the imperfect. Uh, but again, using this particular verb in the imperfect means it's only this verb. It, when you want to say used to, it's only this verb that you have to know the conjugation of because whatever it was you used to do is uh, in the infinitive. Okay, so in, in the past tense, so used to um, is solía, 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 solíamos, soliáis, solían, plus infinitive. Okay, so this verb is only really used in the present and the imperfect. So it's used to make what we normally do or what we normally used to do. Let's have a look at uh, some examples. So uh, now I've put the yo in there because solía can be I or he, she or it. So as we know, we have to use the persons really when it's not clear who we're, which person we're using, which is rare in Spanish because normally they are unique. So, yo solía trabajar en Inglaterra. Yeah, I used to work in England. Now, um, I'm putting the yo in there because it's just a sentence... Uh, you know, uh, on its own, we don't know the context. Probably normally in a conversation, it'd be clear who you were talking about and you might not need to use the yo. So that's why I put it in, in bracket. Uh, numero dos. Solías vivir allí? So, did you used to live there? Yeah, did you used to live there? Uh, numero tres. Ella, again, I'm using the ella to make it clear it's she, not he or I, because it could be any of those. Ella solía salir los sábados. So she used to go out on Saturdays. Well, we all remember going out on Saturdays, not so much now. Maybe you're still going out on Saturdays. I don't know, but uh, I'm not really. But uh, in the new year, in the new year. Okay, so ella solía salir los sábados. She used to go out on Saturdays. Y número cuatro, so I've made a question here. No solían comprar muchas cosas and a negative, just to try and show you a negative and uh, an interrogative. No solían comprar muchas cosas. Didn't they used to buy a lot of things? And uh, numero cinco, this lovely vosotros ending that we all know and hate. <laughs> Soliais pasear mucho en la playa. So use, you all used to walk a lot on the beach. And this ending, uh, just want to, uh, I think I'll just have a little... Um, explanation of the pronunciation because the the, the worst um, problem, if you like, that all my students have is with these endings of the EIS and the AIS. So, when and it's always about the vosotros, isn't it? it, it it's always about vosotros. So, uh, because in vosotros, you've got two general endings uh, of the verbs. Regardless of the tense, because, um, you know, the, the present tense ends in these letters, but also the pre-tree and the imperfect, etc. Vosotros siempre uh, has either the A's ending or the I's ending. And people just really do seem to struggle with uh, pronouncing these correctly. So E-I-S is like... A's, A's. So to me, it's like if you were saying stays, the word stays. So I'm going to put it like that. A's. So, yeah, E-I-S, 
A's. And AIS is eyes, like your eyes or Scottish eye. So eyes. Whichever one helps you to remember it, uh, right? Whether you think of it as um, whether you think of it as eyes, as in your eyes, yeah, or eyes as in Scottish eye, but both will give you the eye sound. So that's what's important. So E I S A's, A I S eyes. A very important uh, uh, difference between those two um, pronunciations. So as I say, it's just something that I've noticed um, students really struggle with, my students, you know, and even when it's been explained, it just, it just seems to be, uh, it must be a, a general problem for English speakers because it's, it is so typical. So if you do struggle, pronouncing those don't think it's you it is very common but have a look at that pronunciation every now and again to try and remind you how it should be pronounced okay vale yes that so uh i hope you found the video useful so solaire is a nice handy little word that we can use to sort of by step you uh, conjugate in other words if we learn uh, verbs if we learn how to uh, conjugate that one I just want to remind you that all the uh, Break the Language Barrier books have been updated. One, two, three, and four. And they're all available uh, to buy on any Amazon site or here, you know, contact me. I've always got some in stock. Uh, if you want to buy them if you live locally okay uh, oh, and of course not forgetting Christmas coming up very good uh, perfect Christmas present for anyone who's trying to learn Spanish uh, the bilingual um, storybooks so you have the story in English and at the side of it Spanish and that um, helps you to look at and see how verbs are conjugated, etc. I mean, uh, you know, it's suitable for any levels, really, because you've got the English and the Spanish together, but, you know, they are more than beginner level, really. But I think if you've got them, you could... It's easy to translate because you've got both the things, uh, both the English and Spanish next to each other. OK, so... Te veo en el próximo video. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It's completely free. It just helps me out. And there is apparently a notification bell that gives you a notification of all new videos. So, muchas gracias. Hasta pronto. Cuídate. Vale. Hasta luego.